Hey everyone, what's up and welcome to another stream. We're talking about Ionic today and I'm back from my vacation. As you can see, uh, I may be a bit more brown than I was before this. Thanks for uh, coming to this stream today. Actually, Thanks for 12 uh, people were already waiting up front. So say hello in the chat. Let me know where you're coming from. I uh, hope you already had a great day today. Uh, and I also hope that I can make your day even better because today we will talk about the latest changes of Ionic, of Ionic version 7. And just to give you a quick, quick preview of what we will cover and go through, um, simulator, it would be really cool if I could resize you. Um, there we go. This is what we're going to go through today. So we will take a look at the latest changes of Ionic 7, um, especially masking for inputs. That's going to be interesting. We have some improvements for different elements that allow us to do pretty cool things. Um, and we'll also talk about a bit more styling. So basically there are four areas we're going to talk about. Number one is input masks. Number two is labels. Number three is styling. And number four is some miscellaneous changes that we should talk about because they are in Ionic 7 uh, version one. So uh, that is the broad idea for today. Have you already tried Ionic 7 version one? Let me know in the chat. Uh, Brad Piri, yeah, Brad, hey, welcome back. I'm finally uh, feeling ready to talk again. Uh, Jean-Philippe, bonjour, bonjour. Hello from Lagos, Okafor. Omri, Vinet and Mateus has been here even before the stream. I really appreciate that. Thanks for your support. Um, if you, of course, quick ad, if you wanna learn more about Ionic, there is no better place than the Ionic Academy. So in case you thought Simon is only doing React Native and Flutter, no, I also do a lot of Ionic. So tons of new courses in the Ionic Academy. You can check it out. Uh, latest course have been released, I think today, uh, about React and Firebase, really using the latest stuff. You don't find that stuff actually on uh, like anywhere else on the internet. I really uh, was, um, like a, I felt like a scientist coming up with that course because I couldn't find any information about it. Uh, so React uh, and Firebase, but also tons of new Angular courses and of course our community on Discord. So if you want to get better with Ionic, if you want to become an Ionic developer, there's really no better place. And this is the most up-to-date resource for all my Ionic training. Now, with that in place, I think we directly dive into today's code. Uh, 30 people, yeah. Whenever I put Ionic in the title, you're all coming, huh? Don't you? Anyway, um, hello from Italy, Michel. Welcome to the stream. Um, let's put up this. Here's the official Ionic whatever release note. And we will actually close this as we're gonna go through this one by one and implement our little own Ionic 7 app. So, um, let's set up a new app. I'm going to call Ionic start mask app blank. Uh, by the way, also, I think this is in Ionic 7. Uh, you can select between ng modules and standalone. Um, this is an Angular thing. We will just do the traditional thing. I don't want to confuse you even more today. So, uh, maybe you can let me know. Are you using ng modules or standalone components? Uh, I think they're really interesting. Um, let me know if you want to learn more about the differences and how you can go from one to the other and I will definitely make it happen. In the meantime, uh, what are we going to do? We're going to first of all go into our app here and da -da 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 -da, lightning speed into the masks app. Here we go. So this is our app. Let's first of all check if we are already running on Ionic 7 version one seven point one did Mike update the templates of Ionic? Ionic Angular seven zero. Mm, nope, Mike, you didn't. Mike. <sighs> you had time, Mike. You had time. Anyway, let's do this ourselves. Uh, shouldn't be too hard. We is there an update command or how did I do this? Like something with latest or um. I think we just need to install at Ionic Angular latest. That should be all we need. 
So here we go. Let's go to uh, 7, 1. Ooh, even 7.1.1. We already have a um, patch update. Uh, let's do Ionic Surf. Let's take a look at this on the browser. So, hello from Greece. Uh, I have a really hard time <laughs> pronouncing that name. Micha? 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 Not exactly sure. Uh, oh, this is going to be fun. This cannot read pro oh we have fun in the house Ooh, nice error after going to the latest version of ionic um i was really looking forward to that Not. um and i'm honestly not completely sure what's going on so cannot read properties of undefined that is always great in angular common something um that is definitely new uh let's see is there anything besides removing the node mode I, I don't assume that anything is wrong in our app i think this app is totally fine and i don't think there's anything specific about this um so let's remove the node modules um and on top i'm going to remove the package lock file and then I'm gonna npm install again for the fun which will give us the latest version here and honestly it should work at that point if it's not working uh, we might have to opt into a different version but anyway uh hello from from Enugu I cannot from Enugu okay maps where is in, is this like a, a country? Ah, it's in Nigeria. So greetings to Nigeria. Hello from Indonesia. Glad to be here. Your videos have been a great help to my hero. I'm really happy uh, to hear that. So let's try Onyx Surf again. And if it's failing again, we might have to go for a little fallback option. Uh, oh, okay. What, 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 there was something in the chat. I think NPM issue. I could I couldn't build my app. That is perfect. Um, Having a live stream with an NPM issue. So does anyone else of you have a problem? If you start a new Ionic application right now and try to install the packages or, or build the app, does the same issue come up? And if yes, please let me know um, if you got the same problems. So because of that, I will just go to the app I created the day before. Let me do a little I'm going to do a little change here because I don't want to show you all the things uh, I've been doing because otherwise it's it's boring. It's boring. So I'm going to make a copy of my source folder and I'm going to put it somewhere here. And then we're going to take a look at the new things one by one. Um, or maybe I'm just going to comment them out and then we're going to talk about them. Should work as well. So in that case, we're doing the live reload here again. It's so cool. You, like you prepare a live stream, then you go live and then it's just not working because of random package or something issue. Uh, that, is, that is really fun. But no problem for us. We are pros. We're used to, we're web developers. We're used to pain. Uh, there's nothing that could stop us. So I honestly hope, because I was running this like five minutes before the stream, that it will work now as well. So here we go. Here is our blank <laughs> new Ionic 7.1 app. Now, let's go ahead. Uh, I also, for reference, open it up on my simulator. So maybe we can take a look at this if we want to. Uh, hello from Canada, by the way. Hello from Greece. Everyone around the world is joining. Um, it's so cool to see that people are still interested in Ionic. So Ionic is not dead. Nope. Just as React Native is not dead. Um, where do we start? Input masks. Ionic has now input masking. Um, many people have asked about this. There are tons of Angular packages. Most of them don't really work great. But we can now easily get input masks um, with Ionic 7.1. How does it work? Let me quickly show you. And I assume that we might need another video and quick win talking about this. So 
Ionic is now under the hood using Mosquito, which looks sounds a lot like Mosquito, which we had enough in <laughs> Joker, um, which is allowing us to use it. Uh, I'm not sure why they're doing this, because with Ionic slides, they also used Swiper, um, and then decided to get rid of this dependency, and now they're introducing another dependency under the hood. I don't know if it's good or bad, um, but from what I've seen, it works pretty good. So the way to get started is first of all, install Mosquito. So in your app, you would do something like this. Um, npm install Mosquito core and the Mosquito Angular React or View bindings. Once you get that, you would go to your module file. And just like for most things, you would add the Mosquito module and import the module. And now you're ready to use this in your homepage. So let's close a few pages and let's check out. So here's an example for Angular. Um, I'm, do we want to use this? Like maybe, maybe we're going to use this from Ionic. So this is the example Ionic gives us. If we just put it in here, we can see the only change is that we now have Mosquito bound to a card mask and the mosquito element bound to some predicate. And this needs to be implemented in our view. And I, you, I agree with you, this now looks horrible. So <laughs> if I take this code um, and let's, let's just comment out the fun here. This is what I did. Don't worry about that stuff. Just worry about this. So if I put this into our code and hit save here, we see that we have this input. So um, there's like a card input or I could have a phone number input with a mask for the US phone number. This is pretty exciting. Um, it looks quite hard, but under the hood, it's just one mask that defines how this view looks like. So for example, if we check out the phone mask here, we have plus one empty space uh, bracket. So plus one empty space. So this is how you create like the the placeholder mask. Um, thanks for subscribing, by the way. Um, same for the cat mask. Then we have like four digits, empty space, four digits, empty space, four digits. So it's the, the one up here. Um, besides that, I can now change this. So let me get rid of this. And let me get rid of uh, the second item here. No, actually the first one, I don't want to have the credit card. I just want to use the phone mask. And if I update my own phone mask to something like this, I could easily have like a German input. Um, hello. <laughs> Did you use my phone mask? Plus four. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's actually the placeholder here. Uh, this is the placeholder, but anyway, um, it fills the view based on our mosquito mask. So install the mosquito package, uh, create the mosquito options and pass them to the input. And that is how you can add basically any kind of input mask at this point. Um, you can check out the mosquito options here, uh, like different mask expressions that you can do. This stuff is a bit challenging, um, but for the benefits that you get, I think, it's something we can do. There's also a lot more about mosquitoes. So uh, if you want to learn more about input masks or want to have like a full example, please let me know in the chat and I will uh, work on a video about these input masks. Besides that, we can get rid of this. Um, we Okay, we covered this one. So now let's talk about something else. Let's talk about labels. This is the second part of the uh, Ionic 7.1 release. And it's about different labels that we can add to Ionic components. So first is the select component. If you do a default select component, um, you could always have like a label. But now you can also have a specific slot label and inject your own content into that slot. So that gives you more options. Let me show you how this looks like. Um, let's see. Um, so this is a select. Uh, oh yeah, it's, I've commented this out. So let me just redo this. Um, well, this needs to be closed. Okay, so second example is this one here. 
Um, we see the label favorite fruit up here. Maybe I should zoom in a bit. Um, this is the label, how it looks. I mean, on iOS, it looks a tiny bit different, but anyway, um, let's remove this as well. Put this uh, somewhere down here. So with the label, you could always style it like this. However, now there's the new option to have a slot injected into the ion select. So we can take the same ion select we had before, basically this one. Uh, and sorry, I'm just moving around. And then you inject a liable. So right now it looks like this. If I would now add the slot label and in it, I can use whatever kind I want. So I could also have text with a different color in here. I could now style my own label. Um, if they are mushed together. I probably shouldn't use label in that case. So then we see we do have this. Let's add a bit more space here. Class ion margin top. So they're not close together. So difference is previously only a string using some default color. Now the label more options for you to actually style that label. Then we also have a new uh, HTML label for input and text area. Uh, let me show you this as well. So ion input could now look like this. Uh, value, whatever, um, just like this. Or we could inject our custom slot again. So this would be the replacement. We would get rid of the label. We would remove the label from the ion input. And instead we would have something we inject into the label slot. As a result, once again, we have the ability to style this exactly to our needs. This is uh, once again, quite interesting. Well, what's the error here? Um, because it just gives more options to us. Some, some things in Ionic are just like, they are as they are basically the label it's kind of hard to customize stuff like this usually and if you really don't want this then you're like mm, how do i go about this now having different slots or css parts defined just gives us a lot more uh freedom and flexibility to style things that we want to style Besides this, so we have the label for select, we have it for input and same, by the way, for text area. Um, we could now also have a label for range. So this is kind of like the opposite. Um, we already had the label for ion input and we had the label for select. And this is now also coming to, um, to a range. So for range, we have two options to use this. Let me bring this up here. Option number one with a range would be just having um, these or now a range with something injected into the slot. In once again, we can exactly style that label. Um, those two options are now available. I think for range, actually, this is what we already had and label is now new. So. Um, we kind of are now on the same level with all the different components and where we got the label. I don't know if there's still something missing. Uh, what other controls do we have? We have a checkbox and we have a toggle. Uh, I don't know if they actually have a label. They're more like tied to something else. Um, but yeah, that's it. Um, okay, so we have masks. We have labels. Those were the two first big items. Number three is now about styling. And this one's quite interesting as it's about the ion date time component. Uh, I'm just gonna add the most basic ion date time. Uh, and probably I'm gonna add this to the top so we can see what we're doing. And I'm gonna do something. Uh, I'm gonna comment out everything I have in here so far because we wanna take a look at how the daytime looks by default. So this is the default UI of the Ion daytime. And that's pretty cool. Uh, I kinda like this, but there's now a lot more that we can do. So with Ionic 7.1, uh, we can style the wheel item. So this is basically the wheel item. Um, I mean, it looks good, but if you have a different color theme, you probably wanna style this in some way. I actually don't know if they also mean this, uh, this label. That would be interesting. Let me bring this in, sorry. 
Um, not exactly sure. We're gonna see. So, um, this is by the way the time button at the bottom, which can now also be customized. So let's take a look at the different options to style this. First of all, uh, oh, and there's a fix coming in for the problem. Add to package JSON overrides Babel Traverse. Oh, that looks really horrible. Why is that required, Jan? Uh, you could enlighten us, that would be really cool. For now, I'm gonna stick to this option here uh, because this is my backup project and I'm happy I have it. Uh, I should really have tried this up front. I'm never gonna start a live stream without the project and then running it at least once. Okay, so um, we can now inject styling into the daytime for the wheel. We can style, for example, highlight background and fade background. Let's not do this one yet. Uh, let's save this for a second. So if I do only the wheel styling, we see <laughs> I have this epic wheel style. <laughs> um, I just wanted to use some colors to make it obvious what, what what exactly we're styling. I mean, we could use the the styling Ionic uh, provided as an example. So they had those two values, which of course uh, look a lot better. So if I now go into this, um, oh yeah, they probably also wanted to use in general a different background color. Yeah, in that case, it makes more sense. And so then also adding color white. Okay, yeah, I can see Ionic. Yep, yep, that makes sense. Um, but I just want to show you what exactly we are styling here. So this is the wheel highlight background. And then we also have the wheel fade background RGB, which is uh, the area above and below here. And in the background, we already see uh, the actual background color of the Ion daytime component. So. This is the first thing. Uh, we also don't really need the border radius. What have they added as well? Um, they also added the uh, time button shadow part. So we can customize this a bit more. And also we added a month year button uh, CSS shadow part to customize the button that toggles the month and the year wheel picker. Let's take a look. So if I comment in the uh, let's make this one red. We see this up here is the month year button and I can easily inject my styling. So if you don't know about CSS parts or in general, like a quick backstory, most of Ionic components are using the shadow DOM now web components. So you usually like can't override the styling. They're encapsulated from the rest of your HTML page. So if you want to style them, the way to inject styling into web components is usually with CSS variables. However, Ionic can't, like it's it's just simply not possible, like with, with a specific amount of time, to come up with CSS variables for everything in your app. So some parts of Ionic components simply can't be styled. I think that amount is going down slowly all the time because Ionic is now also using in a lot of places parts. So we could now take a look at the implementation. Actually, maybe that's GitHub Ionic. Let's take a quick look at this. Uh, that makes things a lot clearer. I think this should be in the core. Uh, where do I found this? In components. And this is, for example, the Ion daytime. This is not the daytime button. This is just the day I've used. I think I picked the most challenging component to take a look at this. Nonetheless, we are here to learn. So let's find this month year button. Here we go. Uh, no, that's just the documentation. Here we go. So this is the actual implementation. Going into this, sorry. Gonna increase the uh, style here. Um, so I hope this better now. Um, here we go, month year button. This is the implementation for the daytime component uh, in Ionic. As you can see, this is the code, blah, 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 blah. And then there's like an ion item. And this is exactly the one up here. Um, and they now define it as a part month year button. And if they define different things as parts, we have a lot easier time injecting completely our own styling into that part. We don't have to rely only on uh, the CSS variables, we can now actually inject whatever we want to once we target a part. And we're not we're not relying on Ionic defining different CSS variables. So uh, a lot of talk to say, um, does this actually work? I don't know, I haven't tried yet. Um, to say that we can now style the month year button, which is the one up there. And we can also style the uh, time button, which is the one 
down here. So now this is also using a cool color. These are some changes uh, that I found really interesting because people uh, requested a lot of changes for the Ion Daytime component. I know there was initially a lot of backlash against the new Ion Daytime. I think at this point people come to like it. I definitely come to like it. I really like the representation and uh, the options and everything you can do with it. I think all of this looks really very native, uh, whatever you want to do on it. Uh, only the usage of different times is sometimes hard, but overall it's pretty cool. By the way, uh, if you want to learn more about the daytime component, there is something I would highly recommend. And that was in, I think, our last live stream. Exactly, that was this one. Uh, one and a half hour where we built this cool Ionic calendar. And for the calendar, we not only integrated the calendar package, but we also integrated the uh, Ionic date picker, I think, to pick some times and work with dates. So that was really interesting. If you want to learn more about this, uh, check out the last live stream. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you are not yet subscribed. Um, quick question, are there any major problems in this release, Mahmoud? No, I don't think so. Um, this is not a major release. This is a, a minor release. It's just 7.1, it's not 7.0. So there are no breaking changes. These are just additions to what we already have in Ionic. So uh, you can safely update your app and just enjoy the new things like um, the wheel styling or the two parts that were defined for Ion Daytime. Cool. On top of that, there's also new select styling. Uh, what does this mean, select styling? Well, 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 let's take a look. Um, where's my code? <laughs> Here we go. Uh, uh, is this the broken app? Uh, yeah, this is the broken app. Where's my app? Oh, here it is. Okay. So do we actually have a select on our page? Yeah, I think we do have some selects. So let's put them up so we can focus on them again. Now we're gonna... Thanks for subscribing. You listened to my note about not being subscribed. Very good, very good. Uh, 10 points to Gryffindor. By the way, anyone playing the new Harry Potter Magic Awakened game? I found this quite interesting for a day and then I felt like, ooh, this is way too much work. I will just go back to Clash of Clans. <laughs> let, me, let me know. Um, so, select styling. Uh, CSS shadow parts have been added to the label and container of select, which means we can do a lot of things with select. So we can do with the ion select uh, something like setting the background of the container now to red and again Accessing something as a part just gives us the full spectrum of uh, abilities to style this in any way we want uh, Same for the label So we could style that label up here in whatever color we like and we can also style the icon however we want and on top of that, they also added custom icons for the select, which is pretty cool. I think uh, I always wanted this. So by default, if you're using the Ion Select, it has this icon. And probably I should turn off my horrible styling here. Uh, <laughs> let's do this, not do this. Uh, let's go with the default. So this is the default select icon. Oh, here we have like the whatever this is, chevron. I don't think it's, it's even the chevron. So now we can have our custom icons by simply saying the toggle icon and the expanded icon on our select component. Let's try to set this. Uh, for example, here, I actually had the code. I think I copied this in the beginning, right? Here we go. So for the first select, I'm gonna say toggle icon, something and expanded icon. Now, now we can see, let's make this a bit bigger. Oh, come on. I hate the simulator. Okay, I think this is big enough for you to see. So this is now the new toggle icon. If I press this, it toggles in the other. And of course I could use whatever. So I could use like home outline and I could use contacts. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, no, con uh, doesn't exist. Contact, uh, what does exist? Body? Nah, that's not how you pronounce body. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> so uh, you could have a lot of fun with the uh, toggle icon and the expand icon. And I think 
I mean, those things are not huge changes. It's, it's not like this is the reason why you're now probably using Ionic. It's also not that there are new CSS shadow parts for the daytime, and it's also probably not that there's a, a new label slot on the select and the input and text area. But all those things just add up. This is just 7.1. It's not like this is version 8 or 10 of Ionic. And this just shows that Ionic is listening to developers. They're reacting to what you request uh, you want more flexibility to style components, to inject your own styling, to make every part of an Ionic component exactly matching your brand and CI. So if you think about that, I think all these updates are really great and helpful for future Ionic apps. At least that's what I think. So uh, you probably don't want to have a toggle between those two icons, but if you do, I guarantee you I will review your app in another app review in the future. Besides that, um, uh, there's actually just one last point, uh, which is, mm, I call this like MISC updates. So these two, uh, segment type improvements and angular and F controller improvements. Uh, for the ion segment, we can now also use number values. Uh, so let's put this in here uh, and this looks pretty cool. I mean, that component is also like, I love it on iOS. I really like the animation and stuff that's going on. I really love it. So uh, thanks to Moritz for contributing this feature, by the way, that's one thing I wanted to tell you, Moritz, uh, which by the way, Moritz sounds a lot like uh, from Germany. There's something like you have a link here, uh, which does not lead to your page. So you're getting a bit of internet fame. Use that time and update your uh, link on your github resume uh, So if you're watching this, thanks again for contributing the feature, but make sure you update your <laughs> link um, And then there's something that might actually come in handy uh, Which is about the angular nav controller. So let's do this. Uh, I'm gonna add one more button Which will bring us Did I have some code for that mm, I'm too lazy to type uh, I gotta have to do. So let's do an ion button. Uh, router link will go to, I don't know if it will go to home. I don't think it will go to home. I called this details. So I just added a details page without a lot of things. Uh, let's go there, details. Okay, nothing fancy. I can go to the details page and I can go back. The thing about the details page is that on the details page, I can now have a button uh, to go back, which is using the nav controller pop. Uh, I don't know if a lot of you are still using the nav controller. It's like, mm, uh, like how it worked before Ionic 4, I think. Uh, and some people are still using it. I mean, in some cases it's okay. I usually prefer to use the Angular router and just do everything with the routing. But in some cases you want to do the nav controller thing. And if you call pop, this now returns a promise with a boolean. And the addition is, uh, so this returns now a boolean, so developers can know if the pop operation was successful. For example, if I on the browser directly go to the details page and click go back, we will actually see from the logs uh, 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 that it returns false, okay? because I just went straight to this page and I called nav controller pop and this just doesn't work because there's no way to go back from this page. However, if I navigate to this page from here and click go back, I'm gonna see go back works and also the result is true here. Um, I don't know if I had a situation in one of my apps where this might have been helpful. Um, but I'm pretty sure somebody is very happy about this because somebody yeah, brought this up or Andrei Andres, 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 uh, implemented this feature and contributed it. So uh, really cool to see two community contributions to the Ionic core making it into Ionic. Now, let me take a look at the questions. Um, Will I need to update my project to use this? My pro latest project is already on version 7. Yes, you need to go to 7.1. Uh, but you can just do this npm install like we did in the beginning. 
uh, npm install at Ionic, Angular, whatever you're using at latest, and then you will get the latest versions. Uh, yes, these are new features, exactly. I used Ionic heavily before, but I haven't touched it in about a year, says Simon. I feel like Ionic apps are just not competitive yet, and the trends are going down heavily, it seems. Simon, do you have any numbers for um, going down? As far as I know, all the numbers of Ionic or Capacita are actually going up. Um, besides that, um, I don't know exactly what you mean about competitive. I always feel like or I come to think about this, that Ionic is playing in a different league. Like they're not here to compete with Flutter or with React Native. Um, they are a solution to a specific problem, which is uh, having too many code bases and not enough resources to build for all the different platforms. Um, also for, especially for in-house applications where you don't wanna train like native iOS and Android developers, you just want an in-house uh, app that most of the time even doesn't have to be like super performant or doesn't have to look super like business enterprise in-house stuff can be different. Um, also, if you don't have a big team, you just can't afford to build for different platforms. So Ionic is a great solution or Capacitor in general is a great solution. So I don't know what you mean about uh, Ionic not being competitive. I feel like it's very uh, a very decent solution it's not the solution for everyone. It's not the solution for every case, uh, but it's definitely a good solution for many people and many companies are actually using it. But there is no reason to use it if you don't like it. So for example, I also do a lot of React Native lately and I like React Native. However, there are situations when I would just go for Ionic because I at this point still know it a bit better. and. Um, note that I can also like immediately do a website. Yes, React Native and Expo are changing the landscape, but right now, if you truly wanna have one cross-platform app, um, it works as a web app, as a progressive web app, as a native iOS and Android app, uh, then Ionic and Capacitor are still very decent solutions. Uh, hi, Simon, have a query if you don't mind sharing your views. Ionic 7 has iOS 14 as minimum supported mobile platform. What if I want to support iOS 13? Do I build a new app? How would you handle it? Um, the question is, why do you want to support iOS 13? On iOS, people are usually like just one maximum of two numbers, uh, major versions behind. Um, so if Ionic makes the choice, to say, okay, only iOS 14 is supported, then usually they base this on numbers and you're just targeting a really, really tiny percentage of people. By the way, I don't think Ionic has an iOS 14 minimum. I think what you're looking at is probably Capacitor because Ionic itself is mostly UI components. Ionic is really just the UI layer for your cross-platform or your native or your web application. And Capacitor is building the iOS application. It's wrapping your app in the native web view controls and giving you access to the underlying platform functionality. So I assume uh, you mean Capacitor. I'm not entirely sure. Let's take a quick look at the Capacitor release. Uh, capacitor plugin, capacitor, capacitor five. Didn't they somewhere say something about 14? Uh, okay. Capacitor five is also fully compatible with these updates and will require a minimum of Xcode 14. Okay, so this is now already a very different story. Uh, maybe you read this in the wrong way uh, because here the release for capacitor five said Xcode 14. Um, that means I'm not entirely sure. Uh, 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 this is the episode. So I would assume that you probably read this wrong and it is about Xcode 14, which doesn't mean you have to target iOS 14. I don't know uh, by heart the build target or the default. Let's check it out. Uh, open NPX cap, open iOS. Let's check out what Xcode automatically got here. So that could be a hint to this. Uh, hello from Brazil, Ronaldo. <laughs> Greetings from here. Um, Xcode 14.1 and iOS 16. Yeah, I, I don't think that Capacitor will only build for Xcode uh, for iOS 16. So here we got it. Um, I can't zoom into this, but if I open Xcode, 
which was created by Capacitor, we see that the minimum deployment target is set to iOS 13. So what I said in the release notes here, uh, what Connor said, is only about Xcode. This is only about Xcode, this paragraph, and it's not about the actual iOS version. Um, Meng said, I went through the Ionic 7 breaking changes on GitHub and there it said iOS 14 plus, okay? Um, I, I, I just can't see it from here because by default Capacitor set my deployment target actually to 13. So I would assume that it works with 13. Um, man, okay, if you got a link to this on GitHub, I would love to see it. Uh, Brett, where is the best place to learn React Native and other web dev skills? Oh, Brett, I know the place to be for everyone to learn React Native and everything beyond that is on Galaxy. So if you check, uh, haven't checked this out, uh, make sure you do it now. There's tons of new material on uh, Galaxies. So uh, this fits nicely into the scheme of, I really like Ionic. I run the Ionic Academy and I put out a lot of Ionic content. But on the other hand, I also like what React Native is doing, how the Expo router works, what Expo is doing in the React Native ecosystem. And I created a lot of tutorials and courses on Galaxy's Dev .dev, um, about React Native at this point. So if you want to learn something new, if you want to learn something besides Ionic, I highly recommend you check it out. Even if you don't end up using it, I think it's super interesting just to see the different philosophies. And that's also why I tried out Flutter for a time and from time to time just get back to it because I, I really enjoy uh, playing with these technologies. But galaxies.dev is what you want to check out if you want more of something beyond Ionic. Um, uh, Terran Vera, Simon recently, si okay, I think he's talking about me. Simon recently used one of your design in Ionic blocks and certainly it helped me to complete the app. Thank you for everyone not knowing. Um, I still have Ionic blocks, uh, which is a library of about, I actually don't know, like 70 uh, components that you can easily drag and drop, not drag and drop, but you can copy the code and add them to your app um, and include them. I don't know, like 70? And it's, by the way, at this point, a one-time purchase. I changed this uh, so you can just buy them once and you get unlimited access. But continuing with the question, help me to complete the app within the deadline. I hope more designs are coming in the future. Kudos to your incredible work. Thank you, Taron Beer. Um, really appreciate this. I haven't done a lot of work on Ionic Blocks lately. I've been talking to my um, uh, developer or my, like, he's not my developer, but he's my developer of choice, William. Um, we might do something about Ionic blocks over the next time. Uh, right now, I just didn't have the capacity next to all the other projects I was doing. And this is certainly <laughs> interesting UI behavior of that page. Uh, I haven't been able to, to work on it, but most of the example should still work because all of the latest Ionic versions didn't really have like breaking changes. Uh, they mostly had like updates to some components or very specific uh, edge case stuff uh, they updated. Um, Jean-Philippe, as usual, all the devices, yeah, 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 yeah. And Jorge, any thoughts on Quasar? No, I haven't used Quasar yet. Uh, this is really becoming a Q&A session. So uh, <laughs> if you get any other questions, just drop them in the chat. We're just going to do like uh, five or ten minutes more of a Q&A session. If you got anything about Ionic, React Native, Flutter you want to ask, uh, just drop it in the chat and I will try to answer it. Um, Qu Quasar, or how are you going to call it? Um, there we go, Quasar Framework. Uh, I haven't used it. Um, for what reason have I not used it yet? Well, number one, I'm already in so many different cross-platform frameworks. I'm into Ionic Capacitor, Cordova, um, Flutter, React Native. I checked out all of that and, and even stuff like Framework 7 that I just couldn't take on something else. Even if they have like a cool animation up here which spins the wheel, uh, definitely enjoy that one. I also wanted to get into the Rust-based solution which was um, Tori. Tori. I haven't. I haven't gotten into this yet simply because I was working on other stuff. I think before I would get into Quasar and I'm now judging just on what I see, I don't like this page. It looks too old school to enterprise, enterprise ready to me. This looks a lot more appealing to the techie, nerdy 
Simon and also they are at version 1.4. Um, so if I would get into something new, I would probably check out Tori because it's just in a completely different ecosystem. It's uh, Rust-based, and I would really love to see what they offer. They actually somehow integrate with Capacitor as far as I know. I don't know uh, how this is working, but this is exciting. And uh, before I get into Quasar, so I would do first Tori, then I would go for uh, native script because I'm just curious what they're doing and why they're still around. Uh, I think they're pretty much doing what I always wanted from Capacitor, but Capacitor never offered, which is like straight going to the underlying SDK from your JavaScript. I know this is something Max Lynch and, and the Ionic team is not really happy about, and they, I think, will never implement something like this simply because of the security issues that you got if you can like from JavaScript go into the native SDKs. Yeah, but if you don't know what you're doing, uh, it can really be helpful and you can actually use native script with Ionic or with Capacitor. So Tori is something I would check out. Native script is a bit like a niche thing, but I would still take a look at it. Tori might become bigger over the next time and about Quasar, I really know nothing. Uh, Alvaro is using it. Okay, that's cool. I think he's a view creator. Um, I honestly don't know. I don't even know how the code looks. It looks like it's it's huge. Uh, developing capacitor apps. Interesting. Um, yeah, but this is way beyond my capabilities and I don't think in 2023 I will have a chance to <laughs> check this out. Um, okay, Excel. Is Ionic Cordova going... Uh, okay, is Ionic... Cordova going to sunset soon. Okay, we must um, talk about the different elements. Cordova is not Ionic. Cordova is its own project. Um, maybe you, you're asking if Ionic is sunsetting Cordova. Um, I don't know about that. I haven't heard anything about um, the Ionic team sunsetting Cordova yet. That doesn't mean it might sunset at any time, but um, I'm, I mean, Cordova is a different project and Ionic is not really tied to Cordova. So what you, you can just use Cordova to wrap your web app into a native container. And that's not really related to Ionic, not really related to Capacitor, Angular, anything like the Cordova project is a standalone project. and it might disappear at some point because all the plugins in the system are outdated or it might just continue forever because people enjoy how it works. I don't know. I would definitely use Capacitor instead because I said, that, like, I'm saying this like for five years now, you get everything great about Capacitor, plus you can also use Cordova plugins with Capacitor. So there's no really <laughs> a need to use Cordova in my eyes. Now, with that being said, Ionic had this native package, what they called uh, Ionic, uh, Ionic Native. They rebranded this uh, a while ago to Awesome Cordova Plugins, simply because there was a lot of confusion around Ionic Native, the package itself. And I, they wanted to free this, this, this title or this package name, because what makes Ionic Native or gives native functionality should be Capacitor. So they wanted to get rid of this and I think they're rebranding this. That's why they call this awesome Cordova plugins. It has some nice bindings, I think, especially for Angular. Um, to be honest, I haven't checked out awesome Cordova plugins for a very long time because I really tried to use Capacitor, uh, the Capacitor plugins and the Capacitor community plugins. So I don't know if this is very well maintained anymore. I can't really speak for this. I can't speak for the um, awesome Cordova plugin maintainer. I don't know who's in charge right now, but I know that um, some features of the Ionic Enterprise SDK might use Cordova. No, they're also, I think they're at this point also using Capacitor. So um, to answer your question, I don't know if they will sunset Cordova. I don't know if sun Cordova will sunset itself. I think it's just yeah, I think it will just die out at some point and you're better off switching to Capacitor at some point. Okay, Terran via Simon, any trick you use for making UI designs comfortable for all the viewports? Also, do you recommend using AppFlow? Okay, two questions. Do I recommend using AppFlow? Well, there will be a paid advertisement, so I can't recommend uh, Ionic AppFlow like 
in a way of recommending something that is paid, but I can say that I've used AppFlow and I really enjoyed using AppFlow. Um, I have a course or I had a course on AppFlow in the Ionic Academy. I think I have one right now, which is up to date. Uh, maybe I also made a video, I don't know. AppFlow is definitely great. Uh, it connects to your GitHub, like you can have different channels, you can publish to the app stores and it's really great. There's a price tag to AppFlow, uh, which makes it kind of only affordable for like enterprise or mid-sized business, I'd say. Uh, but if you can afford it, it's really great. How do I make my UI designs? I have a great designer called Brett Perry. <laughs> Uh, no, honestly, um, I, I usually don't do my designs uh, on myself. Uh, I, I used ChatGPT in Midjourney, as I've shown in one of the videos. But besides that, I don't do a lot of design work. Uh, I would recommend you try something like Figma and get better with this. Um, how do you make this work for all the viewports? I just use usually the browser tools. Um, actually, there are better browsers, I think, from Kitsa. Uh, you might know him. Uh, I can definitely recommend his stuff. I think it's called, what's it called? Zizi browser, Zizi app browser for developers. Um, honestly, I haven't used it. Sorry, Kitsa, if you're, you're joining this stream, uh, but he's an awesome guy. He's also doing funny videos and you can, you can sing and make music and stuff. Um, and I know that a lot of people love this browser. Um, so with that browser, you can, I think, inspect stuff and really, where's the preview? Like what is is this really your landing page, Kitsa? Like, where are the images? Hmm. I don't know. Um, like this here. Getting something like this is pretty awesome. I think there are other browsers doing this as well. Um, to be honest, Kitsa, if you're watching this or if, if anyone is pinging you on Twitter with this timestamp, uh, I would love to give you uh, feedback on Zizi, so please reach out. I think we always also wanted to do a live stream together. That would be fun or anything. Um, so yeah, let me know. This is definitely something Terranvia that I could recommend for uh, creating something for different sizes. Okay, uh, more questions. Simon, do you have an NX course? No, Mateus, actually I don't have one yet. It's on my list um, because I usually work alone and um, or maybe with a team like one, two other people. I don't really have a lot of experience with NX stuff, so that's why I also never created a course about it yet. Um, so what else? Do not judge the book by its cover, John Philip. Maybe it's better than it looks. The Quasar. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> okay, Michaela. Do you think it's better to use Cordova, Capacitor or both? Um, yeah. My definite... <laughs> Definitely capacitor is the answer to this question. Like, here we go, capacitor all the time. I wouldn't start and I haven't started a single project in the last three-ish years with Cordova. I always start them with capacitor and I never look back. As I said, with capacitor, you get a lot better support. I, I just like the capacitor philosophy a lot more that you like treat your iOS and Android project as an, uh, like an artifact of your code like you check it in into source control it's not magically regenerated based on the config xml i really don't like that you can do changes in the native project and you can still add cordova plugins 99 of cordova plugins work just fine with capacitor but with capacitor you get support for the latest swift versions it's a lot easier to uh, be the author of capacitor plugins and rep your native code if you want to do something so there's absolutely no need for me uh, to use Cordova at this point. So uh, that has been my rant about Cordova and uh, Capacitor and, and all the changes. Uh, initially, I just wanted to talk about the changes of Ionic version 7.1, uh, but we made this a little uh, office hours about all things uh, cross-platform development. Anyway, uh, I, I really enjoyed this stream. I, I, expected this to be just 30 minutes now we're already close to an hour uh, and more than 50 people so thank you very much for giving me your attention again if you want to learn more the ionic academy is always open for new members um, if you've got questions about the courses or what you get with the ionic academy feel free to reach out uh, and otherwise don't forget to um, subscribe to this channel so you get notified about the next videos and next week we might actually have a stream similar to this one about react native because expo 49 was released react native 0.7 something 
Uh, so we might have a, a similar kind of stream next week uh, if I can cover everything up front and if NPM is not failing me. So uh, share this stream afterwards with your friends who also need to know about Ionic and the Ionic Academy. If you got any questions, reach out to me. Twitter direct messages, messages, direct messages uh, are always open. Simon, any discounts on Galaxy Dev Taranvir? Yes. Um, if you sign up for an account, you usually get an email uh, a bit later. Yeah, use code Livestream. There was a code for the Ionic Academy. Okay, let me quickly look this up. Um, there was definitely at some point an Ionic Academy uh, Livestream code. Was it code Livestream, Dayanj? Uh, let me know. Let's try this out together. Uh, let's go. Get started with a monthly membership. Uh, and then I'm going to apply some kind of coupon was it coupon live stream yes really uh, coupon live stream um be better add a question mark uh or discount what's it you sure that it exists <laughs> uh i'm it says live stream on your youtube ui oh then it should work huh <laughs> Uh, I'm definitely gonna fix that. So yes, uh, code live stream will definitely work. I think it's code live. Let's try live. Maybe I added like, yes, there we go. First month, $5 discounts. Um, join the Ionic Academy. Here we go. Uh, I'm gonna pin this to the top. And Taranvir, if you want something else for Galaxies, send me an email to simon at galaxies.dev uh, and I will give you a specific code, uh, also a live code. And everyone else, if you're interested in joining Galaxies Dev and also want to get that, uh, please send me an email, simon at galaxies.dev. And thank you, Nick, for the tip. I definitely need to integrate uh, custom emotes or something for this in the future. But anyway, that's Ionic 7 version 1.7, 1. 7.1. 1. 7 that's Ionic 7.1. I hope you enjoyed the stream. Let me know if you got any other questions. And I will hopefully catch you in the next stream or the next video. So until then, happy coding, Simon.